Hello everyone, glad to be back. Today is 13th of March, now it's uh, 3 o'clock, middle of the day by Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my channel in which I share latest updates on the news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. There is quite a few very significant developments and news that I like to share with you for this moment. But before I start, let me emphasize how grateful I am for your time, attention and support. It really does mean a lot to me, so thank you very much. That's been said, let's talk about news now, and I will start with the uh, Ukrainian special military operation. This is RIA Novosti news agency, which is reporting about statements that uh, head of PMC Wagner, uh, Evgeny Prigozhin, made. And according to him, situation in Bakhmut direction is um, very difficult. Zelensky's regime is sending more and more reinforcements, not just manpower, but also military equipment but uh, despite this um, forward units of pmc wagner managing to not just improve positions that they are already holding but also establish some new positions and move forward and basically we have confirmation of this information from uh, no other than head of uh, ukrainian uh, ground forces alexander sirsky who spoke with the Telegram channel Military Media Center and uh, stated that situation in Bakhmut is uh, truly difficult and uh, forward units of PMC Wagner conducting uh, offensive operations in uh, multiple directions uh, same time. So basically, situation in Bakhmut uh, garnison is exactly the same as we talk about uh, yesterday only difference only difference uh, from uh, yesterday's update is that uh, according to latest news pmc wagner units are now establishing control over the underground facilities in uh, a steel plant in the north part of uh, bakhmut so no no groundbreaking changes pmc wagner units are moving forward trying to establish new positions but in general you know i did see some questions about this gap for example why uh, why russian side is not closing this gap uh, and why not fully encircling bakhmut but in my understanding pmc wagner does what they do uh, best they are using bakhmut still using bakhmut and this gap between Bakhmut and the we are as a trap for Ukrainian armed forces and many units of uh, Zelensky's regime did try to enter Bakhmut using this gap and uh, they have, they end up being destroyed by Russian artillery. There are many videos on Telegram channel. I did share some but I cannot share many of them because they are too graphic. For example, yesterday afternoon I did see destroyed armor at the column of Ukrainian armed forces. There, there were some tanks, armored uh, personal carriers that were that become on the uh, artillery fire. They were trying to enter Bakhmut. So, as I said before, PMC Wagner units will use this uh, direction as a trap as long as it's possible. And once they, they will receive uh, order to close this gap and uh, establish full control over the Bakhmut, it will probably take um, no more than uh, one week, maybe 10 days. And uh, they will establish full control over the entire this area. I'm quite confident in, uh, in, in this because uh, in my understanding, Ukrainian armed forces in general are on the breaking point right now. And... Uh, Situation for Bakhmut Garnison, for example, is just uh, dreadful and I don't see how Bakhmut Garnison will be able to conduct any offensive or defensive operations whatsoever. They are on the brink of break mental breakdowns. So what, what kind of uh, operations anyone going to expect from uh, units that are in such conditions? Let's be realistic. And uh, quite strangely, in my opinion, in uh, you know yesterday and uh, today many ukrainian and even russian language telegram channels start talking about some uh, some 
mystical counteroffensive that uh, Zelensky's regime will conduct with support of Western elites to destroy uh, entire PMC Wagner uh, organization and uh, best best the units in uh, Bakhmut direction and they will uh, deblocate Bakhmut and push Russian side forces almost to to the border but of course uh, this is a deception company from um, Zelensky's regime and there will be no large-scale counteroffensive from Zelensky's regime in any direction especially in Bakhmut direction this is just a deception you may see this kind of information on the platforms that you are active on but uh, take it with a pinch of salt because i just don't believe anything like this is uh, can be done by zelensky's regime some rep some uh, telegram channels even reporting that leopard 2 even leopard 2s have been sent in chisovyar to conduct to become part of this uh, operation about the to deblocate the uh, bakhmut and to destroy pmc wagner units but uh, this kind of news even more proves that uh, all these media companies uh, deception deception because no way even if zelensky's regime is such a stupid that they will send uh, leopard two tanks in chisovyar direction i'm quite sure western masters of zelensky will never allow this to happen because it's obvious that once leopard two will arrive in chisovyar for example pmc wagner units will start hunting them down one by one and uh, fairly soon these tanks will end up uh, in military museums in, in in russia as a military trophy so i don't think western elites really want to see this kind of picture uh, so yes i don't believe i don't believe that any large-scale counteroffensive operation will be conducted by Zelensky's regime in the election of Bakhmut. I don't think they have uh, enough forces. So they may try, but uh, it will be devastating blow for, uh, for, for Ukrainian uh, armed forces. That's for sure. Uh, same time, you can see these uh, blue dots. And uh, that means that entire, not entire, but uh, central and the eastern parts of Ukraine are under air alert right now and same time just a few minutes ago i did see uh, updates on some telegram channels about uh, explosions that were heard in the sumi region no detailed information what was that missile strike drone strike or some uh, other event but uh, that's the latest when it comes to general situation on the front line as you can see southern part is artillery duels as usual uh, Donetsk direction is uh, very active, very active, especially in direction of uh, in direction of Avdeevka, which is here. And uh, it's only a matter of days now, and Avdeevka will become under operational encirclement. Russian side actually trying to establish control in uh, Pervomaiska. Uh, north side of uh, north side of Avdevka and of course uh, there are activities in the direction of Seversk also that's uh, we can say traditional development for um, last uh, months also maybe more but main hot topic of course uh, still Bakhmut let's continue let's continue and if there will be some uh, updates I will share information on my telegram channel as i do always you can uh, you will see link uh, on the description and you can subscribe so let's continue now this is ria novosti reporting about decision of ukrainian armed forces to recruit more women and uh, this information shows you how desperate zelensky's regime is uh, when it comes to manpower they definitely lack manpower and they, and they are now recruiting women and uh, according to some russian officials in this case a military expert from uh, lpr andrei marochko priority is given to women that has uh, some experience 
in working with the chemical and biological uh, substances or if they have um, education in this uh, in this field which which may mean that uh, Zelensky's regime in this in desperation may conduct uh, quite you know large scale chemical or biological terroristic attack anything is possible from those criminals so let's continue this is task news agency we have statement from uh, press spokesman of uh, Russian president uh, Putin so according to statements that Piskov uh, made the um, Russian side will continue special military operation because uh, at this point uh, military operation is the uh, only way to achieve cause that was declared from the very beginning of special military operation which is of course uh, demilitarization and denazification of uh, Ukraine let's continue now and uh, this is this is big big news this is uh, very serious RBK news uh, agency is reporting that next week uh, head of China Xi Jinping may visit Moscow Piskov was a press spokesman of uh, Putin Russian president was asked about uh, this uh, information and he said that um, he said that official information will be given to society in timely manner so I assume uh, Chinese leader will visit Moscow next week or maybe a week after but in in the next days in the next days and this is big because uh, as I understand this will be first foreign trip of a Chinese leader since he become a third time head of uh, Chinese Communist Party and um, it's interesting what kind of statements we will hear from uh, Xi Jinping and uh, Vladimir Putin I don't think they will openly say uh, I don't think that the leaders of the countries will say openly that uh, they are now conducting uh, you know cooperation in terms of uh, Chinese military surprise supplies to Russia but I'm quite sure they will discuss this topic and uh, after this visit in a few days uh, some officials from China and some officials from Russia probably will start making statements about uh, beginning of Chinese uh, about beginning of deliveries of Chinese uh, military equipment to Russian Federation first of all if this is happen if, if this will happen after all this is my prediction and I can be wrong you know but if I'm not mistaken then uh, then first of all uh, we will probably see Chinese attack drones and uh, Chinese drones in general that been uh, that will be del delivered to Russia also artillery systems and uh, artillery shells and uh, I did spoke about this topic maybe we may even see some uh, heavy military equipment like tanks and uh, armored personal carriers because China do need to have some experience and they, they may test the armored vehicles in the battlefield so they may also deliver the tanks and the armored personal carriers that most importantly for China in this case they will definitely send I'm 100% sure they will definitely send the officers the military personnel uh, to Russia so that they can have opportunity to gain some uh, combat experience because right now Chinese army has generations of officers that never uh, been involved in any combat whatsoever uh, because last time China uh, conduct any large-scale uh, military operations was uh, when China was at, at war with Vietnam in conflict let's say with Vietnam and that was uh, some 50 years ago so even more even more so I'm quite sure you know media will don't talk about this but I'm quite sure Chinese uh, military personnel also will be sent to Russia to gain some experience and uh, this will be kind of open secret everyone will probably 
knew about it, but no one will talk uh, openly about this topic. Let's continue. And uh, now, if I may, I will take one minute to uh, say that basically to advertise my channel. And uh, what I want to say is that if you think uh, this channel is uh, interesting, if you think this channel is useful, has some potential and deserves to exist in this field of uh, news and political commentary, please consider to support with small donation through PayPal or subscribe to my channel. You will see links under this video in the description box. I will be very grateful for your help, of course. Uh, let's continue. Let's continue now. And this is RT. This is RT's report about Georgia. And um, yesterday, Prime Minister of Georgia made some televised uh, speech. Uh, he made some statements. And uh, RT is sharing one of them. In this case, in this case, uh, in this case, uh, RT is uh, quoting Georgian Prime Minister when he spoke quite uh, directly towards Zelensky and Zelensky's regime. And uh, basically, he has uh, lashed out uh, at, uh, at Zelensky for rallying support for the mass protests in uh, Tbilisi, capital of Georgia, that has take, take place, took place a few days ago. That was very unfriendly. Uh, move from uh, Zelensky, obviously, and uh, Georgian Prime Minister was quite direct about this, and he also stated uh, he also stated the Georgian government will not allow to nobody to use Georgia and transfer this country uh, to a second uh, front against Russia. This statement is uh, very important because uh, we can uh, say that at least some people in Georgian government do understand what is happening in reality. And uh, yes, Garibashvili, Irak Garibashvili did not say anything about U.S. involvement in uh, the stabilization of Georgia. And probably we all know why he did not mention uh, U.S., but, but at least they know what is happening and they have uh, if they are informed they have more chances to uh, more chances to conduct all necessary steps to secure georgian society and uh, georgia itself from uh, any provocations even though as i said many times before if usa is determined to use all its assets in georgia and they truly have assets just everywhere not just in political specter, in political opposition or non-governmental organizations. They have assets in, in ruling Georgian party also and in, in, in Georgian uh, security services and Georgian police and uh, in Georgian army. So if, if U.S. is determined to use Georgia, to destabilize Georgia, conduct regime change and then use this country as a, to and then sacrifice this country and use as a second front against Russia, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm afraid. Uh, current Georgian government will not be able to effectively uh, to effectively separatively at Sakaketa to effectively resist to the U.S. pressure. I hope uh, I'm wrong, and they will manage to secure Georgia. But yet again, time will tell. And uh, here, this is TASS News Agency. We have a statement from uh, U.S. military expert Scott Ritter, who also spoke about Georgian topic. And uh, he basically said uh, exactly what I was saying, I don't know how many days now, that U.S. is uh, behind of this uh, attempt of, to destabilize Georgia because U.S. want to do some regime change and then use Georgia as a second front against uh, Russia. It's just too obvious for everyone that is uh, interested in um, politics and uh, geopolitics in, in general. 
Let's continue. This is TASS News Agency's report about phone call that Putin, President of Russia, had with the uh, Prime Minister of uh, Armenia, Pashinyan. They did spoke about, um, about uh, peace uh, negotiations because b between Armenia and uh, Azerbaijan. They spoke about uh, preparation of uh, peace treaty between the sides. They also spoke about the uh, situation in uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, that's a disputed region between the sides. And um, to be honest, to be honest, I hope uh, Baku and Yerevan, with help of Moscow, with help of all, all the other regional players, will somehow manage and uh, sign a peace treaty between each other and uh, end this conflict that uh, has been devastating to both sides uh, for, for decades now, for, for decades and decades. So let's hope, uh, let's hope Azerbaijan and Baku will find the uh, coming ground. Let's continue now, Ria Novosti is reporting. And this will be no, good not just for uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia itself. Uh, this will be great for the uh, entire region entire region and uh, that's why everyone should should be for peace between uh, these two countries so let's continue this is Ria Novosti and we have information about demonstrations that did took place in in Moldova yesterday and uh, demonstrators give a 24-hour ultimatum to Moldovan government and the demand that uh, government sh will should pay for all citizens of Moldova, uh, government should pay for all expenses for gas and electricity in in, in last three months. Uh, as you know, because of uh, inadequate policy of uh, U.S. controlled uh, government of Moldova, uh, energy prices skyrocketed in this country, and people are outraged absolutely outraged and uh, they did demand the uh, government to pay for for their bills for gas and electricity but of course Moldovan government don't will don't pay for anything uh, really and uh, I think today we will probably see continuation of demonstrations and uh, eventually as I understand, Moldovan society don't really has uh, much choice. They will probably try to uh, force president of Moldova to resign. Uh, they may force uh, government to resign and uh, some new elections may take place. I don't know how it will develop situation, but it's obvious that current government of Moldova and current leadership, including President Sandu, are basically endangering Moldova endangering Moldova and uh, they may very well they may well use Moldova as a as a second front against Russia and I think society in Moldova do fear this kind of development also so no much choice they really have they should force uh, they should force president of Moldova and government of Moldova to resign So let's continue now. This is Ria Novosti's report about uh, new defense and uh, foreign strategy of uh, United Kingdom, according to which uh, London will uh, focus its attention on Russia because, uh, because <laughs> come on, man, oh, everyone knows, UK's uh, elites are extremely Russophobic. That's why. So, according to this uh, defense and uh, foreign strategy, uh, London will focus on uh, on Russia, its attention, and uh, they will fight Russia, basically. They will try to fight Russia uh, in every possible way, except uh, military, except military one. And uh, according to London, they see Russia as a, main threat to European uh, security, which is a quite crazy statement to made 
because if anyone is endangering Europe, it's uh, London and Washington, first of all, and then uh, elites, and then a ruling class of uh, European states. But let's continue, let's continue. This is uh, Ria Novosti again, and... Uh, And we had uh, that's this is quite interesting uh, kind of continuation of uh, previous news. We have statements from a uh, French party. People's, if I'm translating correctly, People's Republican uh, Union party. So leader of this party, Francois. Asselino, I don't know how influential this party is in France. I don't know anything about this 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 party, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, but statements that this politician made is uh, quite accurate in my understanding because he said that uh, steps that Western elites are making and actions that they are uh, pushing forward is uh, exactly the reason why entire world will distance itself from the West and will try to isolate Western world. And uh, to be honest, uh, who, can, who can say that uh, he is wrong? He is exactly the right. Once again, I don't know how influential this politician is in France. I should learn more about uh, French internal policy, uh, and I will at some point. But... But statement is exactly the right. Actions and statements that Western elites are making right now will be main reason that the rest of the world will try to step by step distance itself from the West. And if that's the case, then uh, Western world will be isolated, isn't it? And I did spoke about this many times before. That's why when I see this news, I was thinking, no, wow. This politician basically saying what I was saying for, for, for many times. So let's continue now. This is TAS News Agency and uh, quite uh, interesting. Expectable and news and uh, more or less interesting because yet again we are seeing that uh, taxpayers' money have been and will be spend for uh, for not for people and this time we have information that United Kingdom will increase its uh, military budget spending up to 6 billion in next two years uh, up to 6 billion uh, dollars so 6 billion dollars is about five five and a half billion pounds I don't know what uh, rate of exchange is right now between pound and the uh, dollar but anyway it's a crazy amount of money that will be sent to ukraine maybe or will be uh, sent to accounts of uh, military industrial complex in uh, uk or in in usa but this money will definitely not be spent for uh, for united kingdom citizens to ensure their better life and this is sad really because i just you know a few days ago i did share with you information that thousands and thousands of uh, small companies small uh, enterprises are on the verge of uh, shutting down in in uk and when this is happening same time uk's government is uh, spending outrageous amounts of money for god knows what basically and uh, what you gonna do, man? I mean, it, it's, it's just crazy. It does shows you how much elites really don't care about society, man. It just proves this point. Let's continue. This is Ria Novosti. And uh, we have a statement from uh, Secretary of uh, Russian uh, Security Council, Nikolai Patrushev, and uh, he spoke about Nord Stream pipelines and this uh, new agenda that uh, Washington is pushing through its propaganda uh, tools about some Ukrainian group that did conduct uh, 
this act of international terrorism uh, and blow up pipelines. But yet again, Patrushev is uh, skeptical. Patrushev is skeptical uh, about any involvement of Ukraine in this operation. And it's, it's obvious, man. With same success, you can blame aliens. What Ukrainian group? What boat? What? It's, it's, uh, it's, you cannot talk about this topic seriously, man. It's just impossible. I do understand that Washington did realize how much da damage they, they done to reputation of the USA. They did realize it now, but it's too late. They can blame now anybody and everybody in, in this, uh, in this attack on pipelines, but uh, everyone knows. It was USA and it was Norway. Everyone knows this and the uh, US will have to deal with consequences of actions of the leadership of that country. This is Ria Novosti. Let's continue. Let's continue. As I said, man, you cannot comment seriously. You cannot take seriously statements that US makes and our, about US officials make about this. North Strip, um, North Stream Pipeline, or or any other topic, basically, they cannot be taken seriously. So this is real novelty, and uh, this is very interesting news. Very interesting news. Uh, yesterday, late afternoon, Russian media outlets did write, uh, did report that India, India may apply Western sanctions on Russia, especially when it comes to oil. And uh, this information is based on uh, reports that Bloomberg made. And this is the report, exact report of Bloomberg. And it said that uh, India to ensure no breach on uh, Russian oil purchase sanctions. So what this means that India will uh, buy oil only if oil price is under $60. And if this, if this is true, if this is true, then uh, basically what we are seeing is that India is uh, becoming part of this anti-Russian coalition. Uh, this is sad. This is sad, really. I did not expect this to happen. I did not see reaction. I did. Uh, I was looking for reaction from Russian side, but probably, uh, you know, Kremlin is also surprised because there was no, at least for this moment, there were no reaction from Ruff Russian officials. But me personally, you know, I, I did, I, I was surprised when I see this information. I hope it's wrong, but uh, yeah, if it's true, then Russia will just don't sell any oil to India. A few days ago, I did share information with you that Russia become a third, uh, third biggest uh, oil exporter to India. And now we have this kind of information, which means that from, uh, from uh, I don't know, today, tomorrow or next month, Russia will just stop selling oil to India, Indian companies. Yes, quite sad, but it is what it is, man. So let's continue. Let's continue. This is RT's report about a uh, statement that Seoul's mayor make. And uh, according to him, South Korea should become a nuclear country, despite uh, reaction of international community. And uh, this person of Si Hun thinks that uh, this is the only way to secure South Korea because North Korea is already a uh, nuclear capable country. What can I say? I mean, uh, South Korea definitely has uh, all the technologies and scientific might to develop nuclear weapons. Uh, I'm quite sure about it, but uh, I'm not sure nuclear weapons will give more security to South Korea, to be honest. So let's continue, let's continue. And this, this is going to be last news.
yes this is gonna be last news how long is this video 34 minutes okay so this is rbk news uh, report about oscars oscars took place um, previous in 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 few hours ago and uh, movie show is jay strazo everything all everything and uh, straight away how you translate this in in english has become a winner i don't know this movie you know i may see some uh, some trailers but uh, to be honest when i see here which movies were also nominated and uh, one of them is uh, top gun maverick and uh, and uh, top gun lost to this movie man <laughs> why probably some walk bullshit is involved in this decision i did not watch oscars i'm not interested in, in oscars in any way but i know many people in this world uh, are interesting and you know i think there was some uh, walk bullshit involved in 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 this uh, decision maybe this movie is about some work stuff i don't know but if it was up to me i will uh, give oscar to top gun maverick because uh, because uh, come on man who don't likes first top gun it's a classic isn't it and uh, and second one i did watch it and second one is also quite good maybe not as good as first one but it's it's okay man you know it's uh, fun to watch and it's uh, good entertainment and you know it's sad that top gun did not get oscar and this this uh, i don't even know what what movie is that man <laughs> so I, I i cannot comment on it but i think uh, it's some kind of uh, work stuff because that's a trend in in, in western world so it's easy to predict, isn't it? And same time, uh, I will share. This is about Oscar uh, also. And this uh, news proves that Oscar has become some propaganda tool. Absolute. It was always propaganda tool. But now it's just too clear that it's a propaganda tool in hands of uh, Western elites and globalists and uh, those, those criminals. And... We have uh, information from Commerçant newspaper, according to which uh, Oscar has been given to documentary about Navalny. Navalny is a criminal that uh, calls himself a uh, opposition, oppositionary politician. He is in jail now. Probably you know who, who, who the hell is Navalny, you know, and uh, I have no respect to that person because uh, he is associated with the Western elites. I'm quite sure he has some ties with Western Secret Services. So, in my opinion, he is a traitor. He's a criminal and he's a traitor. So, I cannot respect that kind of uh, individuals. So, but it's not about that. What I want to say, but uh, is that um, this movie, this documentary, was made by you're not gonna believe it, man. It was made by CNN about Navalny and you know they are now pushing this agenda that Navalny is some kind of uh, politic po political figure in Russia and it's just uh, incredible man so cheap you know so cheap that's the level of western elites really that they moves are so cheap you know that you can read their moves uh, quite easily and this development definitely shows that these Oscars and the uh, rest of it is just uh, propaganda tools in in hands of uh, western elites and when it comes to navalny i did share with you my opinion about this person i have no respect to towards him whatsoever and in my understanding same attitude towards him uh, is uh, in like in vast majority of russian society I, i'm quite sure about it, you know and main reason is that he is, has affiliations, he's affiliated with the Western elites, with those globalist animals.
and the Western Secret Services. So that's a treason. That's a treason for God's sake. And he should be in prison for treason. Not just for crimes that he committed, but also for treason because that's the biggest crime. But as I understand, he has some uh, high level of uh, support among globalists and uh, that's why even uh, Russian government is uh, taking care of him, basically. He is in jail, yeah, but he, you know, but he should be in jail for treason, not just for some other crimes. And this is it. This is it for now. This is it for now. I hope you will find this. Um, I hope you will find this uh, update interesting. If so, if so, please hit that like button. Uh, leave some commentary about any topic you like. Share links to my uh, videos or my channel with your friends on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Telegram, or any other channel that you are active on. And uh, if you can and if you want to, you can support my channel through PayPal or Patreon. You will see links uh, under this video in the description box. This is it for now. Have a nice day. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. Weekend just ended for God's sake. So have a nice uh, day and a great week. week. Uh, and yes, take care. See you soon.